Yeah, welcome everybody to today's Philosophy of Physics seminar. It is our great pleasure to have Professor Marco Giovanelli here with us. Thank you very much for kindly accepting your invitation, our invitation to speak at this seminar. Professor Giovanelli is a most distinguished Einstein scholar with a special interest in the relationship between Einstein and philosophy of science in the 20th century. He's also the author of the Sandport Encyclopedia um, entry on Einstein and the philosophy of science. His work is chock full with breathtaking erudition and profound insights. Some of his, some of my all time favorites of his wonderfully illuminating papers are on the Einstein Reichenbach correspondence regarding unified field theories logical empiricism and its relationship to the Riemannian and Helmholtzian tradition of mathematics, Einstein's struggles with coordinates and the point coincidence argument, and last not least, Einstein's treatment of rods and clocks in relativity theory. <laughs> Professor Giovinelli obtained his double PhD in 2005 from the University of Zurich and the University of Turin with a thesis on reality and negation Kant's principle of anticipation of perception and investigation of its impact on the post-Kantian debate. After various postdoctoral positions in Tübingen, Turin, and Caltech, where he was the um, where he was the co-editor of and continues to be the external um, co-editor for the Einstein paper archives, he obtained his full habilitation in 2018 on what is truth, Einstein on rods and clocks in relativity theory from the University of Tübingen. And since 2020, he is professor of philosophy at the University of Turin. The topic of today's talk is close to our hearts, namely on special relativity as a theory of principles on Einstein's distinction between constructive and uh, theories and principle theories. Thank you very much, Marco, for being here, and the floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much for the kind introduction, and thank Patrick for inviting me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and uh, I've, of course, chosen this topic because uh, this debate has started here, the interest for this in here in Oxford for this distinction, and so I thought there was a good opportunity to um, uh, uh, summarize the results of my research on this, uh, uh, on this topic. As you all no, uh, in 2019, after the success of uh, the Brazilian expedition uh, and the confirmation of, of general relativity, Einstein wrote this very short uh, uh, newspaper article on the Times of London, in which he claims that relativity theory is a principle theory like thermodynamics and uh, not a constructive theory like the kinetic theory of gases. Mm -hmm. This uh, distinction has uh, sparked uh, a great debate in the last two decades. Uh, we can divide two groups of scholars, uh, roughly. Um, on the way in the philosophical literature, in the philosophy of physics, like uh, Harvey here or Oliver, um, uh, are uh, claiming that uh, this was Einstein's original insight, very important insights into the structure of space time. And this is shared also by uh, um, people that oppose uh, the view of uh, the, the dynamical view proposed here in Oxford. Uh, the historical literature was more uh, tended to say more, look, this distinction is uh, everywhere in the philosophy of physics at the turn of the century. There's nothing original in, uh, in uh, Einstein's distinction. You can find in Lawrence, in Poincaré, in uh, many other authors at the turn of the century. So both views uh, uh, can grasp only, I, my, in my view, part, uh, part of the truth. Uh, the reason is, uh, is that uh, the distinction in the distinction between constructive and principle theory, uh, two issues are entangled. One pertains, so to speak, to the context of justification. So uh, principle theories provide, um, uh, the distinction provide criteria for the justification of, of uh, existing theories. It's a classification of theories. But there is also the context of discovery, which is entangled with the force. There are two strategies of finding new theories. To understand why Einstein suggested this distinction, why he used it uh, uh, repeatedly, um, uh, we have to disentangle these two, these two aspects. Um, uh, to do so, I will simply 
revise this in historical paper, so I will uh, um, try to make some order in the evidence that we have. Uh, the comparison with relativity theory and thermodynamics was introduced much earlier than 1919 by Einstein, already, already 1907 for the first time, apparently, um, and used several times in the so-called Swiss years, so when uh, Einstein was still in Switzerland. Uh, let's call it theologically an apologetic uh, use of this uh, distinction. Einstein wa wanted to defend relativity theory against a very specific objection. The second uh, uh, period, uh, uh, when he moved to Berlin, you, you can see evidence where Einstein started to use the distinction, or uh, without the name, of course, uh, as a, a, a true methodological uh, uh, insight, a way to describe how he was doing physics. And finally, in the Princeton years, when he was asked to some recollection about his uh, discovery of relativity theory, uh, he will uh, more clearly uh, claim that he uh, uh, um, um, followed explicitly uh, with conviction the model of thermodynamics. And he will also explain why he decided to follow that model. So I will roughly uh, follow this scheme in the, in the paper. Uh, just a brief introduction to understand the point. There's, there are a few places in which Einstein used this example, which is also not original. You can find it in many other authors. So physicists are like someone who tries to understand how a watch works, but cannot open its unbreakable case. Uh, the goal of physics is not only to predict the visible parts of the watch, the watch behave. So Einstein is never supported a phenomenological view of physics. Uh, uh, even if Einstein claimed to be a Machian, I don't think that even a young Einstein never supported this view that physics would only predict the, uh, the behavior of measurable quantities. Uh, the goal of physics is, of course, as a, as a metaphor and analogy, is to understand, to explain why the, the clock works as it works, why the, the parts that we see of the clock works as they do. And to do this, uh, physics must formulate a theory. So formulate a theory that allowing that allows the construction of an hypothetical model of the of the clockwork. Uh, this is the goal of physics to construct a model of the clockwork. So Einstein never uh, never uh, negates this uh, this simple uh, premise. The, point, the problem is how can we discover uh, this this theory? Uh, but we have two strategies. One might what we call the constructive strategy. Uh, one can search for dynamical laws directly that allow to construct these models. If you don't find it, you have to modify these laws uh, and help to find the proper law that will account for what you observe, uh, uh, for, the, for the proper account would, to allow you to formulate the proper model of the clock. Or you can use the principal strategy, an indirect strategy. Before trying to directly find these laws or to modify out to the way to modify them, if you already have some laws, uh, find First, the principle which constrained the allowable dynamical laws, uh, it does indirectly the possible clockwork models. Uh, in the first case, you end up with a, with a constructive theory. The constructive theories are the proper goal of physics. They entail the laws, and uh, these laws will be a solution. The solution can be served as models of, um, of the clockwork or whatever, or whatever physical system you are considering, of course. Uh, and uh, the other theories will be principle theories. They entail only not the dynamical laws, but only the constraint that possible laws uh, must satisfy. Uh, the today debate, as you all know, is dynamical versus geometrical. Uh, uh, strange enough, both uh, uh, in the camp, in both camps, agree that uh, special relativity is a constructive theory, a constructive theory about the structure of, of rods and clocks, as here in Oxford, most people think. Or as other people, as Michel Janssen and John Norton claims, is the structure is a constructive theory about uh, the structure of space time. But both are constructive theories. Uh, I will uh, suggest that it's better to use another opposition. These oppositions might be worthy to pursue for theoretical reasons, but in order to grasp what Einstein was trying to say, uh, I think it's more useful to use a distinction suggested by Mark Lang between. Uh, coincidences and constraints. Uh, we've used this distinction, I think becomes clear why it is legitimate to claim that uh, special relativity is a principal theory. Um, the Lorentz transformations are coincidences. Uh, according to the Lorentzian version of the theory would be the Lorentz transformation simply a coincidence of the existence of dynamical laws. Einstein's claim that Lorentz transformation has constraints on possible dynamical law 
Not that it happens to satisfy, but they must satisfy. Uh, here, one can understand the comparison between, with, with, between thermodynamics and special relativity. Sorry. Do you mean Lorentz symmetry or in the previous? Uh, Lorentz transformations. So Lorentz transformations are, uh, so I, I can explain better maybe in the next slide. Uh, the idea is following the, the, the following. If you, in many, for instance, Planck put the, the thing in this way, in this way, how can you, how can we derive the energy principle, justify the energy principle? But Helmholtz, when he discovered it, practically said, okay, if the all laws of nature, uh, all phenomena of nature can be reduced to the motion of particles interacting by means of central forces, depending only on distance, but then the energy principle is, of course, valid. It's simply an analytical consequence of the fact that all forces are forces that depend only on, a, on the potential. So the energy principle will be a simple coincidence of the fact that all laws of nature are of mechanical uh, type, uh, would be the mechanical laws of uh, mechanical view of nature. Uh, Planck suggested, look, let, I, I agree on the mechanical view of nature, but let's try to formulate the principle without referring to, the, uh, to this particular view of nature. But it's simply say that, we have made many repeated attempts to construct a perpetual modular machine of the first kind using all possible uh, physical processes. Uh, we failed. Let's turn the question around and ask uh, uh, and claim the energy principle is the constraint that all dynamical laws governing those processes must satisfy if a perpetual mobile of the first kind must be impossible. But the analogy can be as the same between Lorentz and Poincaré on the one hand and Einstein on the other hand. So Lorentz. Uh, roughly would say, if Maxwell equations, take away theory of radiation, if all forces of natural electromagnetic, if uh, the mass of the electron is electromagnetic, and so on, then if the electromagnetic worldview world is correct, it was very popular at the turn of the century, then the relative principle is valid. Then we cannot detect the motion of the Earth through the ether. But Einstein turned the, the question around. I'm, I'm sorry, just because this is maybe quite, quite important to understand you. I don't quite get what you mean when you say the relative principle is a coincidence of. Um, you know, only because these are the laws. Of, this is a, not my language, is a, the language by uh, by Mark Lang. Uh, the idea that uh, since uh, if we assume that all laws of nature, the entire nature is governed by automatic theory, the automatic worldview. But then, of course, uh, the Maxwell equation satisfies Lorentz transformation, already Lorentz invariant. All the other laws of nature will behave the same way. And then uh, um, um, Lorentz would claim, look, for this reason, uh, we will not be able to uh, detect the motion of the ether. So if Lorentz of Maxwell equation, Lorentz transformation, let's assume that uh, rods and cloth, the, our, the arm of the Michelson interferometer is made of uh, uh, electrons, positive and negative put together by automatic forces. Let's assume that the mass of the electron also behave in a correct way. Make all these assumptions. Uh, if nature happens to be like this, then uh, this is the consequence I can draw. This is a coincidence. That's the, it seems like consequence is yeah. the yeah. word. No, the, 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 I use the, 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 the expression by Lang coincidence because uh, means it's simple. It happens to be like this. It could be different. Uh, we don't have any proof. Nature happened to be like we saw it. Everything is uh, terminated. Uh, the theory is, by the way, wrong. This is the expression. Yeah, I mean, you can use the other expression used by Lang is byproduct. It's a byproduct of the fact that the nature happened to be a terminated. If you want to prefer this, uh, this expression is coincidence simply means it's accidental. If one law happened to be non electromagnetic everything will collapse. The point of Einstein is that uh, contained in the theory is uh, the opposite. Uh, all laws of nature must be Lorentz invariant, uh, whatever they are. Uh, even the law that we don't know, even the law we discover in the future must be Lorentz invariant. So we, because he turned the, the question around, we never, uh, simplifying a bit, we never detect the motion of the ether. Um, uh, um, um, so let's turn the, the, the question around. Which condition must the laws of nature satisfy if the detection of the model of the ether is impossible? This is, by the way, the, I simply to make it clear, uh, this is, by the way, how Einstein himself phrased the point in a different way. The method of the theory of relativity is analogous to the method of thermodynamics. For the latter, it's nothing more than a systematic answer to the question, what must the laws of nature be like so that it is impossible to construct a perpetual motion machine 
of either the first or the second kind. The analogy, I simplify a bit of the formulation, what must be the laws of nature of the special relativity, of course, uh, be like so it is impossible to construct a device, sorry, forgotten, that detects the either drift and the velocity of light, of course, is source independent. This is, I mean, I think the passage, uh, which unfortunately is undated, where Einstein summarizes the comparison in the most, of, in the most simple way. Uh, there is a point in which I disagree, and I don't know if it's more clear now, but I will return on this point, uh, on Lang, uh, Lang's formulation. Lang claims that constraints are, uh, there's an explanation by constraint. Also, constra also principle theories are explanatory. I think Einstein never used this expression. Uh, I think what is important uh, is that uh, principle theories are indeed constraining. They limit the number of possible uh, the, of possibilities. So they have a justificatory role in the sense that allow for the selection of possible laws of nature. Laws of nature which are not Lorentz invariant will be rejected and have to be modified so they become Lorentz invariant. Um, and a heuristic law because the limiting the number of possibilities um, will um, um, uh, uh, allow to uh, proceed in the finding of the new laws of nature. So this is was Einstein, uh, the claim I would like to make, Einstein's trick to find uh, of, that it's behind most of its success, successes. So instead of directly searching for the new theories, try to modify the available theories so that they fit the data, so to speak, first search for the formal conditions we constrain the number of possible theories. And he always uh, uh, achieved his results, especially in, in space time theories through this uh, trick. Please. Could you just say a little bit more about what the justificatory role is in contrast to the theories? Yeah, uh, justificatory in the sense that uh, a law of nature that uh, contradict is not Lorentz invariant. I found the laws of nature with Maxwell equation is already Lorentz invariant, but Newton's uh, point mechanic is not. Uh, then uh, uh, the, the Einstein will react saying, okay, then the law is wrong and I have to modify it. So only the law, the, the already the Lorentz invariant are allowable laws in the sense of justificatory. I don't know if it's a good expression, but um, um, this is the one I come up with. Um, oh, let me try to prove this claim by using uh, the, the historical ma this material we have at our disposal. So in the Swiss here, so if you open the, uh, the 1905 paper, you see, of course, there is a relativity postulate and a light postulate. Then there's a kinematic part in which Einstein showed that binary uh, absolute simultaneity, um, uh, you can obtain a new transformation law for the coordinates, a Lorentz transformation. Uh, this loss, Einstein insists on this point on very other uh, points, can be tested by using walls and clocks, especially if you think that atoms uh, uh, moving in kind of rays are good clocks, then you should observe the transverse Doppler effect. If you don't observe it, the new kinematics is wrong. But still, the new kinematics is nothing, it's not physics. Uh, to do physics, we have to introduce the dynamical part. Notice that the, the dynamical laws are introduced after the, the kinematical part. No reference to Maxwell equations is made in derivation to or Lorentz transformation. So Maxwell equations happen to already satisfy the new theory but not Newton's law of motion. Uh, Newton's law of motion have to be modified. Einstein modified them. You start in the last chapter, in the last paragraph, number 10, a lateral electron be at rest in a chapter coordinate system. Yes, are, are, these are the laws, apply the Lorentz information uh, for uh, two fields, uh, and you get these new equations. The new, the new terms are the longitudinal mass and the transverse mass. And they simply, so they, the claim is simply that these two masses are dependent on velocity. This was the result that according to, uh, this result is valid, Einstein says, for the electron in our sense of the word. What does it mean? It's not for the electron as an elementary particle, but whatever for whatever charged particle you take. This is maybe the one of the most relevant uh, difference of Einstein's theory with respect to other contemporary theories. Uh, then you can also test the theory using actual electrons because they move very fast. But uh, this is an accidental, so to speak, uh, fact that these particles travel very fast. So we can test if the variation of the mass with velocity is correct by using uh, moving, uh, fast moving electrons. But this was not the, re the reaction towards the theory at the time. At the time, most people saw the theory as an electron theory, just like many others that were 
some others uh, that were developed at the time. So there were experiments that uh, were, were, uh, in, uh, were, were made to test if this, uh, the velocity of mass of the electron is indeed um, as predicted by Einstein or by other theories. But all the theories formulated a model of the electron. It was the Abrams model, which is spherical, uh, and it leads to a particular law of dependencies of the mass or the velocity of the electron. And then it was the Lorentz-Einstein deformable electron. It was considered the same theory. Uh, Einstein's was an electron theory. Einstein's theory was an electron theory. Uh, the experiment confirmed uh, actually Abrams' theory, but it was not relevant. The real point was that many people complained, okay, Lorentz and Einstein's theory get the same result, but uh, uh, Einstein cannot deduce the, the variability of the mass uh, um, or the mass of the electron with velocity without giving us a model of the electron. This was roughly Ehrenfest objection. And it's here that Einstein explained to Lawrence that he misunderstood the sense of the theory. Uh, I read the, pas the, pa the passage, the principle of relativity together with the principle of the constant velocity of light is not a complete system. So it's not a, not a proper theory. Is in fact not a theory at all, not a system at all. It is merely a heuristic principle, which, when considered by itself, contains only statements about rigid rods, clocks, and light signals. Nothing else. How can what what, what can we do with this stuff? But it is only by requiring relations between otherwise similarly and related laws that the theory of relativity pro provides additional statements. Thus, we are not dealing here at all with a system, with a theory, in which individual laws of nature are already contained. There's no laws of nature already contained in the principle of relativity it's, itself, but only with a, with a principle similar to the second principle of thermodynamics, which permits the reduction of certain laws to others. How does it work? But Einstein explained to Lawrence how we obtain the result. But the other people, the electron theorists, are forced to make a model of the electron. So using electromagnetic methods, I have to make assumption about distribution, the, the shape of the electron, distribution of charge, uh, if the mass of electromagnetic completely or only in part, and so on. I didn't do anything of this, this stuff. I simply, uh, then the electron, electron again, uh, for ages scaffold and so on and so forth. I didn't do this. I simply proceeded in this way. I started with, um, uh, from the law of acceleration, slowly moving electron, which is assumed from experience, uh, rough Newton's law applied to charge particle in a, in a, in a, in a automatic field. Um, uh, and I assume that by the first flow velocities. Then using Lorentz transformations, I get a new law compliant with Lorentz transformations. And I, uh, the, the consequence was that the mass of the so-called electron, uh, sort of any mass charge mass point or any mass point in general is uh, dependent on velocity. No model of the electron was necessary. People were not convinced. Also, Sommerfeld was not convinced. And he, this very famous passage told him, we have other letters of Sommerfeld to Lawrence, we complain about the same thing. This guy is, uh, is not providing us with a model of the electron. He cannot proceed this way. So Einstein, uh, yes, agreed and says, okay, uh, relativistic treatment of mechanics of electron is not definitive, of course, certainly not. It seems to me that physical theories can be only satisfactory builds its structure from elementary foundations. The theory of relativity just ultimately satisfy, satisfying like uh, classical thermodynamics before Boltzmann. So before, as I said in other passages, in molecular theories that uh, um, uh, correspond to the second principle of thermodynamics. I believe they are still free from every satisfactory basic elements for electric and mechanical processes. This will be important later. I distrust mechanics as we know it and also electrodynamics uh, because of the quantum problem. I led to the pessimistic view because I failed to give a, a, an intuitive version, a constructive model starting from Planck's radiation law. So I even seriously doubt that Maxwell equations are valid, even not in empty space. So this will be important uh, later. Then he went on, of course, I need a model of the electron. You can do it in two ways. One, like a rigid rod, a rigid body, sorry, uh, but I don't like it because you have to do it. Rigid rod is a very, is a very uh, unpleasant theory. Uh, you have to put it by hand into a theory. It's not pleasant. So I prefer to have electron as a solution of some non-Maxwellian electrodynamics I'm trying to construct. 
And indeed, here Einstein simply enunciated de facto the two problems that will follow in, in the next three, four years. One will be Born's uh, program, which would lead to at least to the notion of Born rigidity, which is very important, uh, but failed. And the second, what Einstein's own approach. Uh, this is an example of a constructive approach of Einstein. Einstein tried to modify Maxwell equations in order to get both uh, the electron and the like one to construct, of course, the uh, expression is important, to construct both the electron like quanta um, uh, from this new theory. So modify Maxwell equation directly to get uh, so solve the problem it was trying to, it was concerning him. Um, why if, if proceeding this way? Because it said, very important expression, the variety of possibilities um, does not seem so great. So in these cases, is a good strategy to go directly uh, there and try to modify Maxwell equations. I imagine to start with, a, um, um, uh, with a wave, wave equations and modify it so that uh, some constant appeared uh, so that it could uh, both get both the electron, the granny structure of matter, and the granny structure of radiation, both uh, elements that the old theory could not justify. Uh, but a uh, few years later, the constructive attempt failed. Um, indeed, when there are not too many possibilities, is a good idea to proceed in this way, but Einstein failed. Uh, I no longer ask whether quanta really exist. I'm not trying to longer to construct them, uh, many fruitful attempts of mer merely constructing, I failed. How to do in this way? But when there are too many possibilities, um, uh, um, then in this case, it's better to, to get back to thermodynamics, to use that model. Uh, that is to search for general laws of physics can still expect to be valid in domain with which we are concerned, uh, and then draw conclusions about the miscibility of any uh, fundamental theory whatsoever on the basis of empirical motivated principle. This is the strategy you wanted to use. So at this point, for the first time, I think in a passage, in a, in a, in a talk that he gave before leaving Zurich for Berlin, uh, the summary of what he meant by special relativity as a principle theorist can be very well summarized in this paper. The heuristic value of relativity theory consists in the fact that it provides constraint, the law of physical systems of equations that express general laws, of nature must satisfy all such systems of equations must be covariant uh, with respect to Lorentz transformations. Minkowski, what did Minkowski? Minkowski only provided a new mathematical scheme. It's not, it's important, but it's only a mathematical scheme to inspect if the law that we have are already Lorentz covariant or needs, needs to be modified. Relativity theory by no means give us a tool for deducing previously unknown laws from nothing. Not that you can deduce directly from Lorentz transformations or for the kinema, new kinematics, whatever new law. You have to start, only provides a way, a criterion that constrains the possibilities, that limits the possibilities. In this respect, it's comparable to a second law, to a law of conservation of energy or a second law of thermodynamics. Newtonian mechanics must be modified to satisfy the criterion. Maxwell equations already satisfy the criterion, and we are fine, but Newton's mechanics, Newtonian mechanics do not. So we have to modify it so they, they, they satisfy the constraint. And so the new kinematics give us the, the, the guide of how the modification should happen. Um, and then we get the correct law. Uh, this altered the mechanical equations have proved to be applicable to cathode rays and beta rays. So the motion of free electrical particles, they move very fast. And so we can use them to test the theory. So the scheme is the following. We start with the two incompatible, incompatible but empirically supported postulates to the new kinematics. The new kinematics is testable using rods and clocks that I mentioned before. So it's not a theory about rods and clocks. Rods and clocks provisionally serves to, to test the new kinematics. We shall see if we can, we actually would like, like to overcome this defect, but uh, the content of the theory is all laws of nature must be Lorentz invariant. This is the only content of the theory. There's no other content. Uh, then when, what was the, when I express the dynamical law, Mathematica in a system K using the four coordinates, uh, apply the Lorentz transformation, but a new, a new mathematical expression on the law in the new cross system of coordinates. Are the two expressions identical? This is the trick. If yes, okay. This was the justificatory power I mentioned before. This is a good law. Uh, if no, the law is not acceptable, but 
in making it Lorentz invariant, we have a guide to find the new law. And this is a new heuristic power of uh, the theory. Modify the law so it complies to the new kinematics, as for example, the new law, uh, the Newton laws of motion. And then in some cases, but you can test the new relativistic effect. In this case, you can test it using fast traveling electrons. But the whole program of the early relativists was to update all physics, um, uh, elasticity theory, uh, electrodynamics and moving media, so that it complies to the new, to a new postulate. So Einstein then moved to Berlin. And as I mentioned before, in Berlin, Einstein started to develop this uh, heuristic trick in a more general perspective. So I think that the, 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 the passage that summarizes very well what Einstein had in mind is this very famous passage here. The researcher should eavesdrop, eavesdrop from nature, uh, general principles on nature by recognizing in larger sets of empirical facts, certain general threads that can be sharply formulated, formulated mathematically. So the idea in general, beyond special relativity is search for some generalizable empirical facts, no perpetuum mobile, no other drift, so on expressed in mathematically formulated principles, energy principle, entropy principle, Lorentz transformations, and so on. Elevate these principles to constraints that all laws of nature have to satisfy uh, if the, the, those facts, sorry, uh, after all. Check whether the known well established individual laws satisfy the constraint. If not, modify them so, so they do so. And then some of these modifications might be testable empirically. Uh, uh, at the end. Uh, Einstein says, okay, there are two, two fields I'm, which I'm working on. One is a quantum field, the quantum research field, uh, the, field of, the field of quantum theory. We have a lot of empirical data. We know that uh, uh, Newtonian mechanics is clearly not valid. Probably also Maxwell's dynamic is not valid, but I don't have a principle to guide me to modify them and to find a new theory. In gravitational research, I have a principle, but I don't, I don't have enough um, empirical material. So it's important to see how Einstein applied this very heuristic method to general relativity as well. This is the way he describes in these papers, the early papers, his way of proceeding. Let's imagine that we have Maxwell electrostatic and we want to move to electrodynamics. But Maxwell had a lot of empirical material and he could do it directly. Uh, I'm in a different case. I have gravitostatic, so um, Poisson's equation. Uh, and I want to go to gravito, gravito dynamics. I want to formulate a field theory of gravitation. Problem, uh, I quote from several passages with the same tenor, seemed hopeless at first because of the arbitrariness resulting of multiple possibilities, too many possibilities. Strategy, search for a principle that limits the confusing mind of all possibilities. Solution, the theoretical route is almost completely given uh, if assume the general validity of the, uh, the empirical law of the equivalence principles. From that, simplified a lot, uh, Einstein claimed there's no privileged uh, coordinate system. So the principle of general covariance is the last formulations of this new principle. We know it was skeptical at the beginning, it tried to avoid general covariance, but then it get back in, 19, in 1915. And again, the language is the same. First, it says, I'm in a chaos of possibilities. Then in November, in the first paper of the series of November 15, says demand of general covariant, covariance limit the possibilities. In March, um, after finishing the, 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 the final field equations, of course, says the general principle of relativity, however, does not allow me to go further. I found a new theory of gravitation, but I couldn't go further because the general principle of relativity does not allow further limitation of the possibilities. Uh, this guy, Hilbert, is trying to go further using only the principle of general relativity, it is clearly mistaken, uh, formulating hypotheses about the structure of matter of the electron it is wrong. Uh, we don't have another way to further constrain the possibilities. So this is like exactly the spirit of the Einstein versus Hilbert. Uh, we can find it in a strange passage here. There's a strange passage from a diary of a rather Rudolf Hum was a mathematician a uh, student of Hilbert, and he met Einstein once, uh, I think in Göttingen, and uh, in his diary he writes what Einstein told him. I think it's significant. A real relativity gives us nothing more than a theory of gravitation. The thought of constructing a picture of the world uh, from, his, from his imagination, he's referring to, um, uh, to Einstein, of course, is magnificent, 
but it could lead to something. But history teaches that such attempts uh, come to grief. Uh, the variety of tensor types is far too great. Again, too many possibilities. And one could not say which one should be chosen for the foundation of electrodynamics. It is bold to get a complete picture of the world, how difficult it was to construct a complete model of the world. I noticed many years ago, and this was the theory I mentioned before, when I tried to explain why the electron was not flying, um, was flying apart, was not to try to avoid the electron was flying apart. So the electron is a concentration of negative charge, should fly apart, why it doesn't fly apart. Um, Einstein uh, tried to formulate that theory I mentioned before, modifying Maxwell electrodynamics, but I had to give up. So better not proceed in this way. And here emerged the comparison with thermodynamics. I compared relativity theory with thermodynamics, not because of reference to the content, I love the method. Both rely on the general principles, mobile, no state of motion is single out with respect to others. Both derive the general principles uh, from general principle, their consequence without resorting to model-like theory, which goes into details. Here lies the liability, but also the limit. So here the distinction is already formulated. Uh, uh, why Einstein was so insisting, insisting on this comparison at this time? Because he was receiving two objections. One that was telling you, oh, the theory is very speculative. Um, um, uh, Einstein wanted to say, no, look, it's not speculative at all. It's based on an empirical fact uh, just like thermodynamics. The theory is empty, does not have any content, no intuitive content, provides no models. We don't know if words is made of particles, fields, doesn't give any answer. Uh, but the theory indeed doesn't give any answer because the theory serves only to cope with the activity theory, stricter senses, it's only a requirement of general covariance, only to cope with the embarrass de Rochesse. There are too many possibilities and the theory only limited these possibilities. So all these materials simply then end up in the, in the final paper that we all, the, the all know. There's nothing new in this paper. Einstein simply summarized using the same language he used before uh, his view as, of physics, not only relativity, all this style of doing physics, I would suggest. So constructive theories try to construct a model. Uh, and you can proceed like this. I tried, usually I failed. Principle theory starts from universally recognized empirical facts and search analytic and for mathematically formulated criteria that any possible dynamical law must satisfy so that those facts as to hold. This is so for special and also in you know, some cases more complicated with uh, general relativity. Uh, Einstein was aware that if you don't have the principle, you got lost. Uh, then you got lost again the hopeless money for the possibilities. And indeed, this unified theoretical program is roughly the history of someone lost in the manifold of possible uh, mathematical structure you can choose uh, uh, to, to, to solve the problem. Only a fine connection, uh, fine contortion, whatever he found for in the next 30 years to try to solve the problem without any, any success. So, does renounce it means denies? Yeah, we don't, we don't, maybe it was not a good thing. If one does not have the, the relativity principle uh, and, uh, or, or something comparable, there are the passages in which clearly says, without a principle, there are too many possibilities. You are lost. A certain point, as I, I cut uh, some slides, but. Uh, so, right, so if you renounce both of those. Things, so you do not have a total, you're disposable a new principle, you get lost. Uh, there are other letters to violence says, you need a principle. Uh, without the principle, you're again lost. At the end, you will not find the principle. Then say, okay, the mathematical simplicity is, is enough. And, uh, but okay, I don't want to discuss this here, maybe. Later. So uh, the other set of documents, the Princeton years, that I think are, are interesting. This, uh, um, I mentioned only very different other documents, but this is a very famous passage again. Reflections of this type. So it, it recalls how they find special relativity. But reflection of this type, uh, this is, uh, that it made in the, in the previous paragraphs, of course, long ago in uh, the turn of the century, shortly after Planck's stabilizing work, I realized the mechanics, nor mechanics, nor electrodynamics could, except in limiting case, let me start quietly. So I could not start with them. So by and by despair, the possibility of discovering the true laws by means of constructive force, the constructive theory failed, the constructive strategy failed. Uh, the longer and more despairingly I tried, the more I came to the conviction, the conviction 
that only a discovery of a universal formal principle could lead us to the assured results. The example I saw before me was thermodynamics. How then could such universal principle be found? Please. Can you just say a bit more about what was clear to Einstein in 1900? Ah, in 1900, it was clear that uh, uh, it was already convinced in the, the paragraph before, it said it's already convinced uh, in 1900 that um, uh, Planck's law led, led not only to, to claim that mechanics is not probably not valid, that we have to find only mechanics, but also heterodynamics is wrong. It was already convinced in, 19, or in 1900. This may be uh, uh, exaggerated. Yes, of course. Uh, that Planck's work in, on, on radiation. Yes, I know that. I think so. Uh, we can discuss it after. Uh, we, we can, it can be that uh, uh, as 1900, uh, his claim is that in, in the, uh, okay, 1900 means uh, 1903, two, three, four, okay, around 1900, I assume. Maybe he, this is a recollection from there. From there. Uh, his claim, his strong claim is, of course, uh, most agreed at the time that uh, mechanics should have been modified. I was the only one already have the argument, the argument of the uh, uh, other two. Of radiation in a, in a, in a mirror, in mer mirror immersion radiation, and he already noticed that also heterodynamics probably should have been modified. Uh, we don't know because the example that this uh, thought experiment was formulated in 1909, but his claim here is already formulated the, the thought experiment uh, before. By the way, we know from letters to, to Besser that already in 1905, when he wrote uh, the, um, the paper on quantum hypothesis, he wanted to attack directly Planck and saying, Planck is wrong, but Bessos told him not to, not to do it because for academic reasons, roughly, as I so simplify the bit. Um, uh, anyway, this is a recollection from uh, how many years later? 50 years later. No, no, sorry, uh, 40 years later. Uh, many of these recollections, by the way, are not uh, trustworthy. So I don't know if it's true that he uh, expressly followed the model of thermodynamics. This is what he was saying here. And, for instance, only, only all these recollections about GR in this uh, very uh, paper are wrong. Uh, by the way, he says the GR is found speculative, it's not true. Uh, I mean, there's a way of reading it from these sort of reflections of this type made it clear as long ago as 1900. The evidence was there for those who were aware of it, but he then became aware of it a little bit after. Yeah, maybe, maybe. So, but uh, I mean, I there was another slide with the passages before. He say, okay, look, I, I already formulated before 1905, this is the point. Before 1905, I was already convinced that Maxwell equations was wrong. were wrong. We see now why, uh, how to find the solutions. I have plenty of experience, uh, all equivalence, uh, all answer frames are equivalent. Plenty of experience knowledge says, yeah, even this one, we don't know. This is a letter, a contemporary letter to uh, a French uh, scholar. Um, a speed of light was secured, uh, thereby a student emission theory of light. Uh, the apparent incompatibility forced me to re reconsider, of course, the, the meaning of coordinates in physics, starting from the formal content, uh, the compatibility expressed in the sentence, the physical laws are invariant with respect to the group lines formations. Of course, this is a restricted principle of the laws of nature, uh, comparable to the restricting principles of the uh, non-existent perpetual mobile, um, which underlies thermodynamics. With restricting is sometimes translated with constraining or uh, uh, Einstein into, in, in Germany. So this is the comparison between thermodynamics and relativity. Uh, the non-existent perpetual model. So thermodynamics could be formulated without any reference to mechanics um, um, uh, in, the, in the classical thermodynamics, of course. And relativity theory could be formulated without any reference to electrodynamics. Indeed, why not? Why already knew the Maxwell equations were wrong. Maxwell equations implied the Lorentz group, so Maxwell equations uh, already comply with the Lorentz group, but Lorentz group does not imply Maxwell equations. So the Maxwell equation was wrong, the Lorentz group would, would, su would survive. Lorentz group is deeper than Maxwell equations. Lorentz group might indeed be defined independently of Maxwell equations as a group within the transformation will leave C invariant. But in 1905, again, I already knew that radiation has an atomic, atomistic structure. However, it's consoling that special relativity is based essentially only on the constancy, not an entire set of Maxwell equations, and not to the presupposition of the reality of the Maxwell field. So the reason why he followed the model of thermodynamics was because of his distrust of Maxwell equations. He wanted the theory 
um, to be based on a more secure foundation than Maxwell equations because he suspected that they were wrong. So I come to the conclusion that, again, inevitably to quote another very famous letter that Einstein wrote a few days, few weeks before his death. So someone told him, uh, it's Born told him, uh, look, someone is telling, um, uh, actually, um, um, forgotten his name, uh, famous um, uh, Scottish scholar who wrote uh, a book on the history of electromagnetism. Sorry, I'm blanking on the name. Whitaker, sorry. Uh, uh, Whitaker has a chapter in the, in the second volume, say, okay, Einstein. Uh, so uh, it was not really the, the discoverer, it was Lawrence upon Carey. Einstein answers in this way. There is no doubt the special relativity through regards to developing retrospect was ripe for discovery in 1905. Lawrence has already recognized that the transformations later named after him were essential for the analysis of Maxwell equations. So he started from Maxwell equations, so Poincaré deepened the knowledge in traditional national group and so on. The new feature of relativity theory respect to these attempts was the realizations that Lawrence's transformation transcends its connection to Maxwell equations, so are deeper than Maxwell equations. Maxwell equations only happen to satisfy the Lorentz transformations, but they are not relevant, not essential. Um, and it has to do with the natural, uh, very natural space time. Uh, a further result, this is a passage which no one mentions, but uh, this is also important, um, is that the Lorentz invariance is a general condition for any physical theory. This is a real point of a new theory. For it, this any entails the contrary theory. This was for me of particular importance because I had already previously recognized that Maxwell's theory does not represent the microstructure of radiation. So it's interesting to see how uh, most physicists uh, close to Einstein at the time reacted to that very letter. So Born said, the principle of relativity was more general and should be found on considerations that which be still valid when Maxwell equations had to be discarded. Pauli again, is the fourth, either Einstein formulated the invariance of laws of nature with respect to Lorentz informations as a general postulate which is more reliable than Maxwell equations. And Lanchos is assistant in, in the late 90s, uh, late 20s, sorry, I said late 20s. All uh, equations of physics uh, had to be revised in order to bring them in harmony with the relativity principle. If a law does not comply with the theory, the law had to be modified. So the, the, the Lorentz sorry, the Lorentz transformations, the transformations are deeper than any single law of nature. So again, I reintroduced the distinctions that you don't like. Uh, I noticed between coincidences and constraints, which I borrow because uh, also because to give longer the priority, uh, because I think it's uh, his ideas are very close to what I would like to say. So I try to explain it again. Lorentz and Poincaré simply say Lorentz transformation are the byproduct or the consequence, if you want, or the future of uh, the actual laws governing the field and matter uh, as a feature that these laws happen to possess. We happen to live in a world in which everything is made of automatic fields. And so we got lucky, uh, but it's a mere coincidence. Why the laws governing the fields are the same the law governing matter? It's a coincidence. There is no explanation for this in Lorentz theory. We got lucky. So the, uh, the theory of matter of radiation, if this theory of matter of radiation is correct, then we get Lorentz transformations and then we cannot, then we cannot uh, detect the motion of the ether. Einstein do the opposite. Lorentz transformation are the are requirement that all possible laws of nature, theories of matter of radiation must satisfy. Actually, the, the theories of matter of radiation that Einstein knew at the time, he already knew they were wrong. It was wrong. Uh, Maxwell equations is an empty space. Maxwell equations cannot explain the existence of a brain structure of matter. So this theory had to be definitely rejected. Uh, but I don't care because uh, I, I'm sorry, uh, he didn't care because um, uh, uh, the Lorentz transformation were based on the two postulates. They are deeper than, than, than Lorentz transformations. So Lorentz transformations, Lorentz transformations do not imply any particular theory of matter of radiations. Of course, this, the goal of physics is to find the theory of matter of radiations. And among those theories, only the one that Lorentz invariant could be accepted, but there's another point. So getting back to the, our uh, debate, special relativity is a constructive theory. So uh, you, you know here, Harvey Brown here, uh, as a constructive theory, uh, like thermodynamics uh, mm, uh, is not, uh, uh, it's like algorithm, should be like thermodynamics after Boltzmann. So we need a new Boltzmann. Uh, Janssen uh, and other people in, in, in his field, so to speak, they say, we already have the Boltzmann, uh, it's Minkowski. 
uh, Minkowski already uh, tell, told us that um, the Lorentzian virus a feature the space time happens to have. So for the dynamical uh, camp, uh, Lorentz invariant is a property that the log governing method, including laws and clocks, happens to have. And uh, Janssen said something similar with regard to a structural space time. Uh, in this sense, there are two sides of the same coin, as uh, Pablo Acuna once said. Uh, and I think in this sense, uh, they, they both miss the, let's say, model normative nature of the theory, which is expressed better by Lange's uh, 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 parlance. Uh, special relativity as a principle theory, in the sense that it is a, a constraint, is a future that all possible laws of nature must have. This must and it is all, is only in these two uh, uh, words is the entire contrary theory is um, implied. Uh, there's only difference, again, uh, for Lange, this is an explanation, an explanation by constraint. I don't think Einstein had this idea. Uh, the point is exactly the constraint, the limitation of the number of possibilities. Which is, uh, which is relevant. So let me give you a scheme of what uh, uh, special relativity as a principle theory looks like. So again, a principle theory is entails only kinematics. We start with the two facts that we all know, the new kinematics uh, without absolute simultaneity to make them compatible. And we can test the theory with rods and clocks, provisionally. Then the contour of the theory, if the, of course the test is correct, all dynamical law must be compatible with new kinematics. This is the only content special relativity. It's a meta theory if you want. Then there are constructive theories. Uh, Einstein always claimed this is the goal of physics. The goal of physics is fine constructive theories. Uh, these theories contain the dynamical laws governing the behavior of particles in fields compatible with the new kinematics. Uh, uh, particle mechanics, electromagnetism, elasticity. The most of the work of the relativist was to update these theories so that they become compatible with special relativity. Only one could be actually tested and that was Newtonian mechanics, so to speak. So uh, through, through, the motor, through the motion of the electron. But also elasticity theory, hydrodynamic, they were all made relativistic, but the effects could not be directly. Among, uh, and it comes to the other theme that is present in the debate, among these theories might have solutions and some of these solutions might serve as rods and clocks. But again, this is not a question we uh, here was I disagree with the dynamical camp here. Uh, so we'll, we'll discuss later. It's trying to do with the explanation. And at the end, everything will be explained bottom up. Uh, yes, bottom up. But with a confirmation, this is a, a holistic kind of confirmation. In principle, I says many times, discussed this in another paper, um, only kinematics plus dynamics together can be confirmed empirically. This is a roughly the scheme. So again, uh, coincidence and constraints in the sense, um, uh, special activity principle theory, principle theories are a class of possible theories, which are not proper theories. Uh, they contain not laws of nature, but only constraint that all laws of nature must satisfy. And this, again, these two words are very important. Uh, but also the other thing, of course, by imposing constraint, they also, offer us a strategy to find new theory in some cases. We start with available non-relativistic theories and by imposing the constraint, we in some cases have uh, the path is defined to find the only possible modification. I conclude with the last quote uh, um, to summarize, uh, again, I think best Einstein methodological trick that he followed in all his career. General principles are Formal conditions that constrain the choice of possible theories. First step, special relativity constraining principle equations of physics are Lorentz invariant. Step two, step two, sorry. General relativity constraining principle, the equations of physics are generally covariant, to simplify the bit, but the theory determine univocally a law of gravitational field, but let a quite wide space uh, for the theoretical presentation of electromagnetic field. The next step would have been the, the further unification. And here Einstein didn't have any further principle and he could only rely of uh, mathematical simplicity. And uh, uh, it, it will be in this context, uh, it was actually because of the end of his life, much less uh, successful. Uh, thank you. <laughs>